Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay, and welcome to this week's episode of The Ratner Report with Michael Ratner, who now joins us from New York City. Michael is President Emeritus of the Center for Constitutional Rights. He's also a member of The Real News Board. Thanks for joining us. Good to be with you, Paul. So uh, the Russians are accusing the Americans of facilitating a coup in the Ukraine. The United States, President Obama, is accusing the Russians of violating international law, and he seems all outraged at such a thing. What do you make of all this? You know, I've been following this story pretty closely, and from one point of view, I've just been outraged by the propaganda in the United States against Russia, against what it's done in Crimea, uh, without putting any of the onus on the U.S. and the, and the European Union and what they've been doing. Uh, and the headlines of the papers are outrageous. I'm looking, I look at the Times one day, it says, this one, it says, quiet admission, U.S. challenge now is to stop further Putin moves. Another one basically says, Obama answers critics, dismissing Russia as a regional power. Everything's painted against Russia. Then they have a huge picture of the woman who's let out of prison who's going to run for president of Ukraine, Tymoshenko, who is in there for corruption, uh, isn't even that popular, and she's running. So you're getting all this propaganda. Russia's the evil one. Russia broke international law. When, in fact, if you've been following this for a, no a couple of years now, uh, the U.S. has been, uh, in whatever way, backing the coup, wanting a coup in, in Ukraine, and actually ultimately succeeded. Then we have the coup, uh, and then what happens is Russia says, well, this is our area of interest, and they have a referendum in the Crimea, uh, it, and then the, Russia basically annexes the Crimea. So you could argue both of them are, 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 are violating international law uh, because there was no authorization to have a referendum in the Crimea. But on the other hand, if you ask yourself, uh, which is the greater violation or which is, or at least to say that one, that the coup in the Ukraine is okay, uh, while the Crimea uh, is not okay, is ridiculous. And then when Obama gets pushed on the hypocrisy of it all, on the hypocrisy of how did we overthrow the government of Iraq? How did we overthrow the government of Libya? Uh, how have we tried and actually did once help in overthrowing the government of Venezuela? How do we justify that and criticize uh, and criticize Russia? And what he says about Iraq is a particularly outrageous language. And I'll quote it. It's we, with Iraq, he said, quote, we sought to work within the international system. Well, that's not saying anything. That's saying, yeah, we tried to get the UN to approve, but we all know the UN didn't approve. So went ahead anyway. So that's a flagrant violation of international law. Then to continue to justify Iraq, he says, well, with Iraq, we didn't take any resources. We didn't annex it. Um, and we ended the war. Uh, now tell me about that. We didn't take any resources. Many would say that war was about oil. Who's in there? It's not the Russian oil companies taking the oil. Um, we didn't annex it. Well, it's not next door to us. Um, let me tell you, if it, if it had been Canada going hostile to us, we would have tried to, to do exactly, exactly what Russia did. So his excuses make no sense at all. And then he's also brought up, you know, people who have pointed out who are smart enough to say, well, what about Kosovo? Didn't the U.S. actually intervene militarily in Kosovo uh, and then hold a referendum? And why is that different than the Crimea? Well, he has trouble explaining it. He said, well, there were human rights violations uh, going on in Kosovo. Assuming it's true, does that give the U.S. the right to go in there, uh, intervene, hold, it, hold its own, uh, hold a referendum and divide it off? Uh, it doesn't at all. And under his, and under his watch, to, to say they worked with the international system on Libya is, is the same amount of hypocrisy because, yeah, they got a U.N. resolution, but the U.N. resolution was not about regime change, which clearly that's what it was, became what it was about. Right. It was about allowing overflights or something, flights over it to uh, protect. Uh, it was supposed to be about the defense of Benghazi, but it was at the time Cameron of the U.K. and all the officials that were pro the resolution were all saying this isn't regime change in order to get support for the resolution. And then it immediately became about regime change. Right. And so we overthrew a government in Libya. So the U.S. looks, you know, foolish here. And what I can't stand about it is as you read the papers, it's all as if Russia is responsible for what happened. When if you read carefully, as I said, uh, the U.S. was deeply involved uh, in the coup uh, in the Ukraine. And so we're getting a completely disguised, utterly disguised piece of propaganda. And it's likewise on other countries in the world. You know, you pick up the paper today. I think there's this picture yesterday, uh, the picture of the demonstrations, uh, the picture of the demonstrations going on in Venezuela, uh, protesting in streets of Venezuela with an eye on Cuba's government. Um, well, there you go again. The U.S. already tried to do a coup 
uh, in Venezuela and actually did for a few days, which the New York Times endorsed, I should say. After that coup happened, when Chavez was thrown out, the U.S., the New York Times writes an editorial saying, we don't normally support coups, but we did in this case. Now, what's happening again? Who are those people on the streets? Um, are they the people, the Maduro supporters? Are the buildings they're burning down? Are those the, are those the, the, the buildings of their supporters? No, they're the government buildings. So it's, again, U.S. propaganda saying, we, the U.S., we're the good, we're the side of democracy, we're on human rights. Um, and we engage in humanitarian intervention to protect. M Michael, uh, Michael, why, why do you think that much of liberal America uh, is so opposed and has been so antagonistic to the Chavez regime, now Maduro? I mean, I, you find actually even a little more sympathy for Cuba, where, you know, clearly there is not any, as much room for the opposition. The, the elections are not in Cuba, are nowhere near. I mean, you can't compare the electoral process in Cuba to Venezuela, which is an open electoral process. There's been all kinds of observers who say the elections are fair. And I'm in no way saying this is some model, you know, perfect democracy, although I think it's rather hard to be a perfect democracy when you're trying to take privileges away from the elite. But, but why is liberal America so against the Venezuelan government? Paul, you said it in the last line. You're trying to take privileges away from the elite. And that's never been supported by the people who really run the United States and give us the propaganda or the newspapers. And that's why that incredible picture, half page of the New York Times today, of the protests uh, in Venezuela and what that shows and what that influences is the people who are reading the New York Times and others. Uh, so what you've had is this incredible onslaught against Venezuela, from Chavez forward to Maduro. Of course, the you know, the nationalization of the oil companies uh, certainly was one reason why you got propaganda uh, against Chavez. Its relationship to Cuba is another one. I mean, Cuba, this is at least a 50-year embargo against Cuba and still going on. Uh, anybody who trades or does this kind of work with Cuba, Cuba's doctors are in Venezuela, Cuba, Venezuela's oil is in Cuba. Um, they're going to, this country is, gonna, or at least the elites in this country are going to hate that. And so it's been a a nonstop onslaught against Maduro, against Chavez, um, just as it's been in other situations when they want to bring them down, just like it's against Putin, just like it was against Saddam Hussein. Uh, not that they're comparable because some are worse than others, uh, some are better than others, uh, but the onslaught of U.S. propaganda, which in the name of human rights, in the name of democracy, is really hiding U.S. Hegemon hegemonic interests, U.S. imperialism. That's what's going on, and that's what these papers do with human rights, with words like democracy, they hide the ultimate goals of the United States, uh, which is their hegemonic interests uh, in the world. It's incredibly outrageous when I read the Times every day now. All right. All right. Thanks for joining us, Michael. Thanks for having me, Paul. Thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.